But Jesus can give peace. And Jesus is the hope for Darfur. And I really want us to be praying, not just for help, humanitarian help, that can just help them for a few more days. But we need to help them, help the churches, the burning Christians, the one on fire with the Spirit. We want to help them to go out and preach the good news. Not to bring hatred, not to bring uh, difficulties, but to bring peace in the hearts of the people. They need it. They have had so much difficulties. So to me, this is the burden of my heart. I, 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 uh, I learned, or, or let me say, God put it in my heart in Kenya to reach unreached area, to, uh, to plant churches in these uh, areas. And this is the vision that I have. I, I have big meetings, but I, I, that's not my calling, to have the big meetings. I want to train the church planter, the local people that can go out there and can bring Jesus into the lives of the people. I must, uh, for, for two years ago, two, three years ago, I also uh, came to Ethiopia because there came an email to me. And, uh, and uh, it had come to Salem Church here in Oslo. And uh, it was somebody from Ethiopia hunting for, for, for me. <laughs> he didn't know how to get in touch with me. Then he just saw a Pentecostal church on the internet and he sent an email there. And then they, re they understood it was me, so they sent it to, uh, to my email address. And, uh, and then when he got in contact with me, he said, at last I have found you. <laughs> I was together with you planting churches in northern Kenya when you were uh, telling us to go and plant churches. And I caught the vision, he said. And I, when I, we were, uh, went back to Ethiopia, I started to plant churches. And now I have planted 91 churches in Ethiopia. <laughs> And you were the one trained me to do it. So you are my spiritual father on church planting, is it? <laughs> and it's such a joy to, uh, to see that. But God has put on your heart. This is something that really can help people in a tremendous way. So now I'm, uh, I'm training. And I, my, my vision is to, to train the national church planters to go and reach the unreached areas. My goal is to reach all the unreached uh, people, uh, peoples. There are still some in Kenya but lots of them in Sudan, and I want to help the nationals so they can go out and reach these people. Help them financially, help them by training, help them by, by going together with them and being a part of them. We are all the body of Christ. If we are in Sudan or if we are in Norway or wherever we are, we are all the body of Christ, and we are to fulfill the great commission of Jesus. This is still the great commission, and we should be concerned about it. We want to bring Jesus back, and um, I would like us to pray and uh, let me just tell one more story, because I believe that we should not be confused. What is mission? Of course, when I ask a church, are you doing some mission work somewhere? They straight away start to tell me about that project and that orphanage and that uh, help uh, program and that humanitarian help and all that. And I'm not against humanitarian help, but I believe that Jesus, he was not just telling about helping people with some food stuff. He was telling about bringing people to Jesus. Amen. Really to experience the Calvary, uh, power of Calvary. When we started to send out uh, preachers in northern Kenya, and I was there with them, there had some other missionaries had been there before, bringing clothes, bringing uh, food, bringing different kind of things in to help the people. And some few came to the churches, but many of them had not really been converted. They, they had just, we call them in Kenya, Unga Christians. <laughs> I mean, they had been Christians just because they, be, they got food. But then came the poor Pentecostal preachers. They had, hardly, they had hardly food enough for themselves. They had nothing to help the people with. And they came out in the marketplace, and they started to preach the good news of Jesus. They healed the sick people. They cast out the demons. They saw people transformed from sin and a sinful life to become new people. And in one village, I remember his, the, the preacher there was called Martin Nero. And uh, he had been preaching there, and when he came, there were seven bars in that they were selling beer in seven different places there. But you know, when he had been there for a year, 
six of the bars they had to close down because there were almost no more coming and buying b- beer. <laughs> now the owner of these six bars, they, they came to the authorities there and they said, now you had to stop this guy. He is taking the business from us. <laughs> now the leader there, he, he spoke to them and said, no, I tell you, now the people in this town have started to pay tax. They have never done that before. <laughs> And uh, even now, there are uh, people, uh, they are now sending their children even to the schools. And uh, before, they were just drinking and uh, run, uh, ruining their family. And their, uh, their farms were not just laying there, not doing anything with it. Now they are producing. Now they are helping their family. Now they are taking care of the people. Now they are doing something to, to really lift the whole situation in our village. No, he is a good fellow. He is helping our town. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I I believe it is so important for us to understand that the Great Commission of Jesus is still valid today. I mean, we have a lot of different places around the world. We need to take the gospel of Jesus to these people so that we can really experience the love of Jesus. And do you know, when we do that, we lift the whole society. We lift the whole villages. The whole towns are being changed by the love of Jesus wherever we go. And I, I believe this is so important now and there, there are so many places around and I, I would like us to be praying for the unreached people groups. Why should some hear the gospel hundreds of times when there are still people living in this world that has never heard the name of Jesus even once? We have a responsibility, and I want to put it on your heart as you are praying here. Pray for the people that has never had an opportunity, even once, to hear the name of Jesus. And I mean, we, we are responsible for these people. We, we need to take the gospel. I mean, how can they believe if they have not heard Paul is saying? I mean, they need to hear the gospel. And how can somebody hear if it's not being preached? And how can somebody preach if he is not being sent? We need to be doing the Great Commission today. And I tell you, God will help us as we are doing what Jesus told us to do. And we will do it together in the name of Jesus. May God bless you. Hallelujah. Keep praying. Can we take some time and just pray for Sudan now before I want to share a word of God also together with you after. Heavenly Father, we know that you have given us the, the privilege to be your children. And you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross so that you could get children from all different people groups and tribes all over the world. And Lord Jesus Christ, you said that all authority was given upon you in heaven and on earth. And you said that we should go to the end of the world and to preach to all different nations in the world and all people groups so that they could come and believe in you. And you will be with us every day, all days to the end of the world. And you are with us today here now. And Lord Jesus, we just pray in the name Oh, your own precious name, put it on the people's heart, put it on your people's heart in Norway to be able to reach out to the unreached areas that you commanded us to go, that we can be praying together that you will release people for the harvest. Release harvesters to can go to these people because the harvest is so great, but the harvesters are few. The laborers are so few, but Lord, raise up laborers that can go out. Raise up people that can send out laborers, that can all together can we reach out to the people that are needing the gospel in the world today. Oh, thank you, Lord, for bringing us together here and let us all have the burden in our heart to reach the lost people before it is too late. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.